These box and pointer questions are pretty simple, just don't panic and you'll be fine. But that doesn't mean to leave them to the last five minutes of your test, because then you'll pa be panicking, and then you won't do fine. Anyhow, we have a list t containing 1, so let's draw that. And then we append something. Because we're appending, on the list we have, we'll just draw one box, because that's all appending can do. We're appending a list, which should tell you to draw an arrow pointing to another list. Well, what does this list contain? Well, the first element is t. So we'll draw an arrow from the first box here, all the way to the first box here. The second element of the list is another list containing 1, which looks like this. I hope you know why. If not, cl then click here for a refresher, because it only gets harder with... This one's tricky because it does a thing with your eyes that makes it hard to tell which parentheses go with what. It's kind of like this language. But we can deal with this. We're once again appending something to this list, so let's draw one box at the end of 1, 2. Your first priority should be simplifying the expression, so, what, so whenever we see this t0, we can just replace that with what's at the 0th index of t, or 1. Now we know that we'll need to append this t1, t1, and to make things easier, we can just replace this t1 with 2. Now we know that we're just looking at this t12 the whole time. So we'll just be appending our list to whatever is the first index up to but not including the second element. So our answer is going to look like 1, 2, 2, and we're done. Except, uh, no we're not. Uh, you might think that because these two forms look similar, and because in our case, because t12 gives us only one element, it'll act the same as t1. But the thing is, the colon here does not just give us an element. It always gives us a copy of the list. So really, this box here doesn't contain 2, because we're not appending 2. We're appending a list containing 2. This will be important coming up, but not in this next question, which is kind of different. Question C looks like this. Let's break it down. We have this, which points to a list that has the number 3, and we'll be extending it by some amount. So let's just draw some boxes here that'll be filled in later, because that's what extending does. Five extra boxes should be good enough, but we'll just leave this last box open to remind ourselves that we could be adding more if we need to. This question is really meant to test your understanding of list syntax and the extend function. Let's put aside the question for now. Let's say that we have a list x that has a, b, and a list y that has 1, 2. Remember that we can put lists together by just adding their names, so x plus y will be a, b, 1, 2. X dot extend y is going to do this addition and assign the new list to x. It's a list mutation and is the exact same thing as x equals x plus y. But what happens when we do this x plus in brackets y, or in other words, x dot extend brackets y? Well, let's think carefully and not overcomplicate things. We're still adding two lists. The first is x, and notice that this next list has only one thing in it. So our sum slash result here is going to have three boxes. So what's in this third box? Well, it's our y list. So it'll contain an arrow that points to our y list, and that'll be our result. The big idea here is that when we add lists, this will copy the list, and this brackets y will not. This bracket y is going to point to the same thing that y points to instead of copying it. Let's move on to the question. The big question here is what this is. Well t makes a copy of the list t points to, so it'll look like this. Brackets t is a list with just one thing, and that thing is a pointer to the same thing t points to, so it'll look like this. Finally, there's this, bracket bracket t. This is a list, so let's draw a box. But it doesn't have any numbers or strings in it, so we can't write anything like that in here. Instead, well, it has another list, doesn't it? So in our still empty box here, we can draw an arrow that points to a new list. This list looks familiar, right? We just did something like this, so we'll do the same thing again. We'll just draw an arrow that points to the same thing t points to, so it'll look like this. Let's put all these boxes together, and that's this. That's the whole thing. Now we'll put this whole object and attach it to t, and we're done. Alright, almost done with the page. Our last question looks like this. First off, we have t and it points to a list that has 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it looks like we're going to be changing it up a bit. First off, we're going to be changing the first element with what looks like to be a copy of t from the second element up to but not including the fourth element. So it looks like this. Alright, good so far. Now for the third line. Well, this looks a bit familiar, yeah? We're just going to be replacing everything from the second element up to but not including the third element. So you might think that we erase the second entry and replace it with something, but that's not the case. 
Let's ignore the question for now. Say we have a list x, 1, 2, 3. There's a difference between something like this and this. This first one replaces the entry. So if we execute the code, in the zeroth entry, we erase what we had and replace it with an arrow that points to the list. So it'll look like this. The second one is very different. You might think we erase all entries from the zeroth element up to, but not including the second element, and replace them with the entries of the list. But that's incorrect. Instead of erasing these entries, we slice off the list entirely. And in that space, we put this list. So now we have this. OK, back to the question. So as you can see, we'll slice off all entries from the second entry up to, but not including the third entry. So to keep everything clear, we'll note that t is still this list. We'll make a copy of the list that will eventually point t to. Notice that we aren't copying this 3, 4 list, because in t, the first entry doesn't really contain a list. It has an arrow that points to this list. So in our copy, we'll slice out the second entry, and as you can see, we'll replace it with t. So now it looks like this. And now t is going to point to this new list. Last line, t4 is going to be t.pop. All right, so let's erase whatever's in the fourth entry. And now we eliminate the last entry of t and put whatever object was there in the fourth entry. Now t looks like this, and we're finally done. Now, with the page, I mean, not the test. Um, we still got like four more questions, which actually means 12. All right, so let's keep going.